Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see all of you. So many familiar faces. And it's really a pleasure to be here with you on, the, on behalf of the mayor to kick off this 93rd annual World Trade Week. Huge thank you to Maria Salinas. She has been nothing short of visionary in her short time uh, at the chamber. She's interjected global considerations and insights throughout the chamber's work. I'm so grateful for her leadership and of course that of her team, including the one and only Carlos Valderrama. World Trade Week shines a light on how important global trade is to Southern California's economy, our prosperity, and our place in the world. Last year was another record-breaking year for our ports, airports, and our customs district. LAX, under the leadership of Deborah Flint, is now the fourth busiest airport in the world and the number one destination airport in the world, serving over 87 million passengers. More than 1,200 weekly nonstop flights to 93 cities in 47 countries help bring tourists, students, and business executives to our region and our people to the world. These routes also transport nearly 2.5 million tons of cargo, making LAX the 10th busiest airport in the world for cargo. We know we can do even better, so we are investing more than $14 billion to reinvent LAX deliver world-class experience to passengers, while also, at long last, connecting LAX to public transportation. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Now, as for the port, thanks to the hard work and ingenuity of Gene Soroka and his team, it also broke records for the third year in a row with cargo volumes exceeding 9.5 million TEUs in 2018. That is the busiest year ever for a port in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Our diverse populations also support international connectivity and trade. At least 37 of the largest foreign-born populations in the United States live in LA, and we are home to some of the world's largest diaspora diasporas of countries like Mexico, El Salvador, Korea, Vietnam, and Israel. It's why we have over 120 ethnic or foreign language media outlets and why you hear more than 200 languages spoken on our streets every day. So much of our lives is shaped by global trade, from the clothes we wear, to the cars we drive, to the gifts that we give. And let's not forget the trade and services so important to LA's economy, like entertainment, education, tourism, and design. But open, free, and fair trade is about more than goods and services. Trade also fuels the movement of ideas across borders and builds relationships that improve our understanding of one another and help us confront shared global challenges together. It's easy to take for granted the global trade connections networks and the workers that make it all possible. And it's really a testament to you, the people in this room, that global trade is seamless, seemingly easy, sometimes even invisible. That's why I love this year's theme, because it gives us a moment to appreciate the people that make global trade possible. The small business owner who stays late to develop an export strategy. The longshore worker who gets up early to head to port the government official who helps a company access a new market, the lender that helps finance a shipment, the freight forwarder, the manufacturer, the foreign company that opens an office in LA and invests in their new community. Together you make up the, the global trade engine that is Southern California, and each of you are what makes it hum. You and millions of others outside this room are the people behind LA's renaissance. The people that have made LA, according to Bloomberg News, the largest, sorry, the most productive city of all the largest cities in the United States. Yay. <laughs> now there's a common saying when it comes to trade, it goes back to the 1960s, and that's a rising tide lifts all boats. Experience has shown us though that not all boats rise equally and some aren't rising at all. Income inequality, wealth inequality, opportunity inequality, they all persist. 
There are very real and heavy weights that keep some boats from lifting. So how do we, local government, nonprofits, and the private sector, lift the anchors that drag down some of these boats? We can't look solely to foreign countries or trade policy to crack the code of globalization. Because particularly uh, as a subnational government here in Los Angeles, we also need to count on domestic policy because investments in education, skills training, workforce development, infrastructure, and sustainability are key drivers of our ability to compete globally. And learning about what LA has been doing, I have been very impressed with the many initiatives that respond to the fact that the city needs to help grow the industries of the future and our workers need the tools and skills to succeed today and tomorrow. For example, under Mayor Garcetti's leadership, full-time first-year community college enrollment from LAUSD is up 56% in the last year. And that's because, that's because of the College Promise program that has made tuition free for the first year and we're now committing to a second year as well. The Higher LA's youth campaign has placed almost 17,000 young people in part-time and full-time jobs. The LA Tech Talent Pipeline, a partnership between the mayor and the chamber's Bixel Exchange, expands training and job opportunities for the next generation of talent. Measure M, the largest local transportation initiative in American history, is also underway to build 15 rapid transit lines, to pave our streets, and importantly, to create hundreds of thousands of jobs that will last for decades and cannot be outsourced. The mayor just released LA's new Green Deal this week. And under that plan, we are reaching for very ambitious climate targets, like making our city carbon neutral by 2050. But importantly, we will also be creating 400,000 green jobs by 2050. In a few short years, we've already created 35,000 green jobs. That's enough to replace all the coal industry jobs lost across the country in that same time. Sustainability targets are job creators and business opportunities. Electrifying 100% of buses by 2030, which is another one of our goals, will support 10,000 jobs. Growing the publicly available EV charging infrastructure by 2025 will support 1,500 jobs. Pro-growth, pro-trade, pro-planet, and pro-equity can all go hand in hand. In City Hall, it's been eye-opening for me as a former ambassador and foreign policy strategist to work so closely with other deputy mayors on issues of education, mobility, homelessness, gender equity, immigration, and economic development. These are the chains, in, these are the links in the chain that can lift anchors and allow more boats to rise. World Trade Week is a moment to pause and take stock and reflect on the importance of trade to this fast, interconnected world. When World Trade Week began almost a century ago, our federal government had turned away from trade protectionism in a decided fashion. Skepticism of free trade has ebbed and flowed over the past 90 years, but today I'm concerned that unilateral tariffs levied to remedy one problem in turn worsen the economic problems in other countries and harm us in the end with higher consumer costs, production costs, and retaliatory tariffs. What's more, other countries are now getting the green light to erect unfettered and unquestioned trade barriers to U.S. products in the name of national security and economic security. To be clear, some criticisms and critiques of other countries' unfair trade practices are absolutely accurate. But a coordinated, coherent strategy in close consultation with industry and workers moving through the World Trade Organization and with the support of like-minded countries would help, prevent, help, would help prevent the unpredictable trade patterns that frustrate efficient planning. For the past 93 years, open markets and free trade have helped Southern California become an engine of global trade. We must not ever underestimate the benefits of free trade nor blindly assume that they are distributed fairly. Continued investments in the people that make this engine hum will help ensure equitable growth from trade as well as strengthen our ability to compete globally. And now it is my pleasure to present a proclamation to Vince Iacopella, the Executive Vice President of Alba Wheels Up and Chair of the World Trade Week Committee.